Welcome to Emmanuel Lutheran Church. We are an open and affirming, reconciling in Christ congregation who aspires to be anti-racist because we know it is a journey, not a destination. As the Spirit blows on this Pentecost Sunday, we are thrilled to have you with us and invite you to join us in the live chat, to send a message to welcome to worship at emmanuelseattle.org. Let us know that you are part of the body of Christ as the spirit blows in the world. Now, I invite you to join us for worship. presence of God, the love of Christ, and the gift of the Holy Spirit is with you all. Let us pray. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones and your spirit gives truth to this world. Send us this spirit, transform us with this breath and give us the language to proclaim your truth, your love in the world through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts, the second chapter. On the day of Pentecost, all the Lord's followers were together in one place. Suddenly, there was a noise from heaven, like the sound of a mighty wind. It filled the house where they were meeting. Then they saw what looked like fiery tongues moving in all directions, and a tongue came and settled on each person there. The Holy Spirit took control of everyone, and they began speaking whatever languages the Spirit let them speak. Many religious Jews from every country in the world were living in Jerusalem. 
And when they heard this noise, a crowd gathered. But they were surprised because they were hearing everything in their own languages. They were excited and amazed and said, Don't all these who are speaking come from Galilee? Then why do we hear them speaking in our very language? Others are from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Egypt, parts of Libya near Syria, Rome, Crete, and Arabia. Some of us were born Jews, and others of us have chosen to be Jews. Yet we all hear them using our own languages to tell us the wonderful facts God has done. Everyone was excited and convinced. Some of them even kept asking each other. Others made fun of them. 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 But this is what God had the prophet Joel say. When the last days come, I will give my spirit to everyone. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. And your old men will have dreams. Alle willkommen til Apropheten. Både min og klinge. De unge vil få åbenbaret min tidligere gennem sinne. De gamle vil få det gennem flyttet. In those days, I will give my spirit to my servants, both men and women, and they will prophesy. I will work miracles in the sky above. And wonders on the earth below. There will be blood and fire and clouds of smoke. The blood will be the blood of the blood of the sun will turn dark and the moon will be as red as blood before the great and wonderful day and the Lord of the Lord the Lord of the Lord of the Lord everyone shall believe for help alors tout person qui fera appel au nom du Seigneur sera sauvé word of God word of life thanks be to God
Holy Gospel according to John, the 15th chapter. Jesus continues, I will send you the Spirit who comes from Abba God and shows what is true. The Spirit will help you and will tell you about me. Then you will also tell others about me because you have been with me from the beginning. I am saying this to you now, so that when the time comes, you will remember what I have said. I was with you at the first, so I didn't tell you these things. But now I am going back to Abba God who sent me, and none of you asks me where I'm going. You are very sad from hearing all of this, but I tell you, I am going to do what is best for you. That is why I am going away. The Holy Spirit cannot come to help until I leave. But after I am gone, I will send the Spirit to you. The Spirit will come and will show the people of this world the truth about sin and God's justice and the judgment. The Spirit will show them that they are wrong about sin because they didn't have faith in me. They are wrong about God's justice because I am going to Abba God and you won't see me again. And they are wrong about the judgment because God has already judged the ruler of this world. I have much more to say to you, but, but right now it would be more than you could understand. The Spirit shows what is true and will come and guide you into full truth. The Spirit does not speak on its own. She will tell you only what she has heard from me, and she will let you know what is going to happen. The Spirit will bring glory to me by taking my message and telling it to you. Everything that Abba God has is mine. That is why I have said that the Spirit takes my message and tells it. To you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Pray with me, beloveds. God of justice, we thank you for the chaos and the calm, the wisdom and the truth. Reveal your presence of your spirit with us here and now. Amen. Well, Pentecost greetings, beloveds. It is Pentecost Sunday. The day in which we wear red and we celebrate. If we were gathered in person, we might have red roses for people, or there might be red paper airplanes flying around, or there would be this this flood of red in the sanctuary, and we would be dressed in red, and we would be aflame. That is the reason why we wear red. To, to symbolize that glow of the Spirit that falls upon us, that promise that Jesus has made to us, that we have received, that we are assured has been kept. Yes, on this day, we get to remember that God loves to show off. <laughs> I mean, tongues of fire. Many, many languages all at once. A fervent prayer, a deep, heartfelt, continuous going on and on and on kind of prayer. Abiding promises. Yes. Jesus and the Spirit are showing off today. Showing us the love and the care and the desire of relationship that God has for us, with us, in us, through 
us. Beloveds, we are on the other side of resurrection right now. The gospel text that we hear today comes before the resurrection. It's part of that uh, high priestly prayer that Jesus was kind of going on and on and on about, that whole lovesick Jesus can't stop praying because he's just not ready to say goodbye, Jesus, on the night before he was crucified. That Jesus tells this prayer, reminds this, the disciples that, that there is something coming, that the Spirit is coming and that they won't understand it at that moment, but we are on the other side of resurrection. And thus, we do understand. We understand that Jesus is talking about the Advocate, that holy breath of God, that inspired wisdom, that abiding presence of the Holy Spirit that we celebrate today. That is coming has come, has arrived, is present here in our midst. This Holy Spirit power, it's, it's a spirit that reminds us that things are going to change. Things are being shaken up. Things are, are really kind of wild and happening. Lots of languages. Everybody gets to hear the gospel. Everyone gets to understand. Everyone is given opportunity to enter into relationship with God. To acknowledge the relationship that God has already established. Yes, beloveds, there is a huge show-off moment around Pentecost. This week, we are listening to the cries of our Palestinian siblings who are experiencing deep violence, oppression, pain, and anguish at the hands of our siblings in the government of Israel. And this week, we are listening and preparing ourselves for all of the announcements coming out of the health department from the CDC and the state health department and the governor's office and the president's office, all of these announcements coming forth, telling us about this new thing that's about to happen, this new way that we can engage with one another now that folks are getting vaccinated. Yes, there are new things happening, and as well as we look forward this coming week, we are coming close upon the anniversary of the death and murder of George Floyd. Yes, beloveds, there's a shift happening. The world is about to turn. We, in our congregation, are preparing to gather again in person, remembering our core values and what it is that we believe and how we choose to live as we prepare to gather back together. Some will join us, some will not. Some will be vaccinated, some may not be able to be vaccinated. Some don't have access to the vaccine yet. Yes, there's a lot that we are considering and preparing as we get ready to come back together. I am grateful for the movement of the Spirit. Even when she is disrupting everything that feels comfortable. The conversations that have been happening in uh, circles where I've been traveling this week have been around what it looks like to come back a year after the murder of George Floyd, a year plus after we've gone into lockdown. What is it going to be like 
when we get back together, it will be different. We will be making some changes around how we gather. We will be reorienting ourselves to life together. I had the opportunity this week to be nourished and fed by the Festival of Homiletics. And there was one preacher in particular who made a statement that stuck with me as it relates to our text today. The Holy Spirit brings change. Whatever happens when the Spirit shows up, there is change. And oftentimes it is hard to know, unless we are looking back in retrospect, whether a particular change is Holy Spirit driven. But we can be certain that if change is happening, it should spark our spiritual antennas to put up our finger and test the wind to see if it might be the Holy Spirit. I am prayerful and hopeful that the changes that are coming in our community are spirit-blessed and spirit-driven. They, they come out of a deep sense of prayer and consideration, and I feel good about the Spirit's presence in those conversations and therefore in the changes that we will be enacting. But on a larger scale, beloveds, I want us to think about the way the world is changing. Folks who are asking for equity just want equity. Folks who are dismantling the ways in which we understand justice and policing and community safety. It means that things are going to change. The murder of George Floyd is a clear marker that things need to change. And that change is going to look disruptive. It's going to sound noisy. It's going to come in so many different languages. I encourage you, beloveds, to listen for your language. Because here's the promise of Jesus. The Spirit brings us to the truth. The truth of our value the truth of our worth, the truth of our belovedness, the truth that God invites us to be together, to be beloved, to love one another. This truth that God has for us applies to our Muslim siblings, our Jewish siblings, our Palestinian siblings, our Israeli siblings, our Ugandan siblings, our Liberian siblings, our Chinese siblings, our Asian siblings, our Taiwanese siblings, our, our Thailand siblings, our siblings from Indonesia and Hawaii, our siblings from Alaska and Mother Earth. Yes, our siblings of creation. If God loves all of creation, and if everything that God made is good, then we can only conclude that we are all good and we are all beloved. That's the truth. That truth may require us to live differently because we know that it is true. Jesus says that he is bring, the Spirit will bring us the truth, the truth about sin, because we had it wrong. We 
understand understand our understanding of sin is wrong. It killed Jesus, our understanding of sin. It was wrong. It is wrong. Any understanding of sin that places people on the outside of God's love is going to be wrong. Whether you agree with them or not, whether they are like you or not, whether they are the same political party, whether they are vaccinated or not, if anyone is on the outside of God's love, that sin, that is sin. And we have got our way of being wrong. That's the truth. The Spirit brings us that truth. If there is a way of understanding justice, Jesus tells us we got it wrong. <laughs> Our we means of justice or the legal system that exists in this country resembles a whole lot more closely the Roman Empire and Pax Romana, the peace of Rome that smashes any dissent in order to achieve peace that's not God's justice. That's the truth, beloveds. Yes, Jesus invites us into a truth that was incomprehensible pre-resurrection, but now, post-resurrection, we can handle the truth. God has given it to you through the Spirit, and beloveds, we can carry this truth into the world, into our neighborhoods, and into our lives. May God bless you with a spirit of truth that you will be ready for change. Amen. Alive in the risen, Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Gracious God, you give the Holy Spirit to your church, filling it with many and varied gifts. In the church throughout the world, strengthen us in our visioning and dreaming, that it may discover anew the Spirit's creative work. Help those who worship and believe in you to work together to love and praise you, despite their differences. And pray for those working to spread your healing and greatness to places near and far. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of life, in this season of spring, your mighty works are too numerous to count. The earth is full of your creatures, living things, both great and small. Open your hand and give them the necessities of this life. Send your fresh spirit over the face of the earth. Hear us, O God. 
your mercy is great. God of the nations, at the sound of the rushing wind, people speaking different languages proclaimed and heard together your needs of power. As we heard this morning, the people of biblical Jerusalem were moved by this. Pray for those throughout the world, whether it be in our own nation, or in Asia, or Africa, or India, or the part of the world surrounding modern-day Jerusalem today, especially Palestine and the Gaza Strip, that these people can feel your greatness the same way by understanding people of all languages and tongues. Fill the leaders of all nations with your Holy Spirit, so they exercise your gracious will in the lives of people. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of faithfulness, you tend to the needs of your people, even the size of our hearts. Hear those who cry out to you in distress, illness, or other need. Restore to wholeness all who have any need this day, especially those in our own community. In our community, some of these people are Kathy, Cynthia, Selena, Beth, Barbara, Claudia, Tiffany, and those undergoing cancer treatment in our neighborhood. We pray for Hannah, Ann, Amy, Jennifer, Joe, Bron, and the family of Jason, as well as for foster parents. We pray for those impacted by the pandemic, by violence throughout the world, and for those helping to make the world a more healthy and peaceful place. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of love, fill the congregation of Emmanuel Lutheran Church with gratitude for the gifts we have received from you. Help us to renew our ministries, to heal our divisions, and open us to the needs of our neighbors. We realize that so many of our neighbors, near and far, do not have the benefit of some of the privileges that we have been blessed with. Pray for those who are without food and shelter. Pray for those who have been treated unfairly because of their race or their culture. Pray for those who have been untreated unfairly because they are older or less abled or less educated or have a gender identity or orientation different than someone else. Pray for those who both here and around the world who are treated unfairly because of their nationality or their social standing or for any other reason. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world. For the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. God be with you. And also, and also with, you. with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. To God. Let us give thanks to God. For God, God is good and God's, and God's mercy, mercy endures, forever. endures forever. In the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he gathered with his friends, those who loved him, those who would betray him, those who would doubt him, those who would obey him, those who saw a hope for the new future in his life. And as they ate, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this, remember me. 
Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks. He gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this. Remember me. Savior, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Abba Ima in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. spring of joy. Through this meal, you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. May our glorious Lord grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and love the risen Christ. God, creator, savior, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Hey everyone, it's time for the community announcements. There is an ongoing um, COVID crisis in India and in response, the Lutheran disaster response is helping a hospital raise funds to purchase their own oxygen generator. Um, we also have a congregation member who passed along the name of a specific hospital in southern India that we can financially support. So there are a couple of opportunities to, um, to assist people on the ground in India and information can be found in your email. There are also ongoing ministry opportunities around our church. Um, we have an intern coming, and if you could assist in preparing for our intern's arrival by finding affordable housing um, for the intern, um, her partner, and their dog, or serving on the lay um, intern community, those are a couple of ways you can do so. And there's also an opportunity to escort Asian elders as they go on their errands about their day in the city. There are also opportunities for online worship leadership through Sign Up Genius. Finally, there will be advocacy alerts um, in our emails that you can respond to to support the work of the church. Today after worship at 11.30 is Zoom coffee hour. Um, at 1 p.m. is the ongoing series, How Do I Read the Bible? with our Redeemer's Lutheran Church. And tonight at 7 p.m. is story time with the Austins. A few updates from the building re-entry committee. Um, starting June 6th, Sunday worship on YouTube will begin at 9.30 a.m. Um, 
Keep an eye out in your email for an, impor an important survey that will assist the committee in reentry planning. And finally, an opportunity for drive through slash walk-up communion in our church parking lot will take place on June 6th from 10.30 to noon. Pastor Priscilla will be joining with Pastor Lara of St. Andrews uh, in Bellevue for a Thursday prayer circle throughout the summer. Um, times and locations will be, are listed in your email. Hello all, this is a message from your building reentry committee. Missing communion, please join us Sunday, June 6th between 1030 and noon. For drive through communion, drive north on Pontius Street and turn left into the parking lot. Priscilla will be in the parking lot on the driver's side of your car to administer communion. You can park in the neighborhood and walk up for communion wearing a mask. Hope to see you Sunday, June 6th, for the drive through communion. Look for more details in the newsletter and upcoming emails. Bye. Hello, everybody. This is a Synod Assembly report. So, Rachel and Renee attended Synod Assembly and they're going to share with us some thoughts on uh, how that went. Rachel? You know, as a, as a whole day, it was kind of a snooze, you know, but. <laughs> <laughs> because it was basic business. Uh, we did the essentials, we did the elections, we did the passing the budget, we did the amendments to the constitution, kind of all just went right down the line. Uh, highlights were the worship service at the beginning for me, and uh, even the church-wide representative was okay, wasn't mm -hmm. stimulating. Uh, uh, I'd like to hear Bishop Eaton's greeting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, hearing the anniversaries at the end was really good, yeah. uh, especially since there was two years and several people that were associated with the Emanuel, either as members or former members, was yeah. fun to hear. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it was good. I didn't go to the breakout sessions because I thought what I needed more was a walk around the block. And I looked at them and thought there wasn't anything there that was going to be new to me so mm -hmm. I wouldn't gain from it so that's basically how the day went for me yeah for me it's pretty similar <laughs> um yeah I think um some of the benefits of a uh, synod assembly being over zoom our voting is a lot easier um and it happens a lot quicker than it normally would and you can just see the results right away because they use the zoom poll feature um I think um, that was one of the things I appreciated about it being online because although like there wasn't really it was it felt a lot more bland overall than normal just because it's through yeah. screen but voting is a lot easier um, and it's a lot easier to see their PowerPoint slides because they just share their screen so you're, you're not like I don't know in a um, in a, co a conference hall, like all the way in the back somewhere, struggling to see because this is right on your screen. Um, mm -hmm. So in those ways, I think I appreciated assembly being online. Um, and it was nice just to be able to um, step away at any point, just because you could just have your screen off and step away as you need to. Um, I also did not go to any of the breakout rooms. Um, I needed a break from, from sitting, listening to everyone talking. Um, yeah, but um, yeah, I feel like there's some positives and some negatives to it being online, but um, it was a long day. It's a long time to be on a screen as well. Um, but overall, it seemed to go pretty well. And I think we elected Imani to the council as well. To the Senate council, as well as Sherry Ann. Right. So yeah. That's very exciting. Um, Jim shared with us via email. He wasn't able to be with us here as we're recording this, but he just said his quick comment about assembly was 
that um, it's only his second one, but he was most interested in the beginning worship, like you, Rachel, and the video of anniversaries, which we'll show right after this, uh, the highlights of folks that we know. Um, most of the assembly seemed cut and dried, um, but it made for a very efficient meeting. Uh, the lack that was missing was the camaraderie and the in-person that in-person permits, and hence the era of Zoom therefore also stymies much discussion on motions brought to the assembly uh, for vote or approval. And so there were no motions. There were actually no resolutions this year. That was a- right. I know, and that kind of made it bland. It did, it did. It was kind of exciting when they were like really impassioned speakers on both sides of an issue. Plus, exactly. I just so miss the contact with people, yeah. uh, you know, uh, hanging in the hallways and a lunch and across the tables at discussions. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that somehow when you're on Zoom, people don't really even feel free to do that kind of just casual talking, you know, you're right. wasting somebody's time. Sure. So, you know, sure. and I have to say it was the shortest assembly I've ever been to in my life. Yes, they ended an hour early. It was, I know. It was like, <laughs> wow. What a gift. What a gift. I didn't know that was even a thing. <laughs> well, that's great. So uh, I will say that I was one of the, um, I led one of the breakout rooms um, talking about the, the LIVE project, which is Living into Vocational Engagement. And we, uh, we shared some things around that project. Uh, you've already seen in announcements, the things about interrogating privilege, which is a course that I'm teaching as part of that project um, and other opportunities. And we'll be launching a whole thing um, in the fall and Emmanuel will be in the know. You can be, she'll okay. be assured, absolutely. Good. All right. Well, great. Well, thank you very much, ladies, for, for sharing your uh, reflections on uh, Senate Assembly. Say hi to everybody. Hey, hi. Hello. Good to see you, Renee. Good to see you, Priscilla. Good to see Good you, to too. Good to see anybody. Yes, yes. <laughs>
Don't forget to like and subscribe down below. And don't forget to tap the bell to get notifications whenever we post. See you next time.